the know-it-all Adam Kelso, the has-been Billy Joe Shields be legend Phil Anderson. Welcome to the Gruppetto Show. Tonight we're going to be doing our mid, our inaugural mid tour and ultimate, and ultimate mid tour to France preview. Billy Joe, how are you? Uh, I'm exhausted, Adam Kelsall. How many nights straight have you done of watching the tour? Mm. Oh, every single night I have been staying up till about nine thirty, and then going bugger that, this is too late, and then watching the highlights the next evening at five thirty. You told me before mm. over dinner that you'd watched every stage. Yeah, I'm a filthy liar, Adam. I'm pretty sure you would have known that. I can't that by believe now. Mm. you you say these things, and then as soon as the camera comes on, you yeah. say something else. Total liar. I'm not to be trusted. Now a little bit. People who have been watching up until now thought I had Phil Anderson on my t-shirt, and then noticed that I moved. Here's a <laughs> a poster of Phil, and mm. well, we have a special guest in the show, in the in the studio tonight. A, v- a very special, a very guest. special guest. Very special guest. We started out high. We set the bar high with Phil Anderson, as you mm. know. So before we go there, let's look at a bit of Phil merchandise. We do have some lovely Phil merchandise. We revealed here. in the last some memorabilia, show, in fact, that Phil was the very first factory pilot, fact- Oakley factory mm-hmm. pilot. Pilot. Let's say Oakley again. Oakley. Oakley. Are they pilot. Oakley glasses? Uh, they could be Oakley. They definitely could be. I would love to review some Oakley mm. jawbreakers if Absolutely. I ever get the chance. So here we have Phil. That's right. Phil, do you want to zoom in on that, Norm? There's our huge zoom. Mm. There's Phil modelling the Oakley Phil Anderson The model. Oakley Phil Andersons, I think mm. those were called. They yeah, were called the, 100%. the factory Phil. Yeah. Yeah. Pre hipster, the filthy pre hipster. This might be an adults only episode because we do have a semi nude picture of Phil as well. Ooh. Mm, There's Phil in the bathroom shaving mm-hmm. his legs. Now that is an iconic image. It is. If you look at it the way I'm looking at it right now, kind of looks like he's on the toilet though. Mm. Yeah. Let me have a look. He 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 might be cracking one off. <laughs> We know from previous episodes that Phil was the very first guy, as well as being an Oakley factory pilot, to try that up on the handlebars. Yeah, yeah. And back in the day, they actually, when they first came out, do you remember what the nickname was for them? No. They called them Taps. <laughs> do you know that? This well, is how, a fact. Oh, cause you, do you remember this, George? Because you tapped them. They called them Taps because they were like the big taps in hospitals. Did you just were you talking to George Hincapie then? No, is George, George Hincapie's Hincapie not there? here. Is he the guest guest speaker? Why would we guest? scrape the bottom of the barrel like that? Ooh. We've got the one and only Ooh. George Valance in studio. Welcome, George. George is mm-hmm. going to be our fact checker tonight. Yep, because in the hiding in the dark there. We uh, nobody had told me this, Billy. Joe. Ten time Melbourne to Warrnambool well, rider. Ten time Melbourne two time Sun That's Tour impressive. rider. State, national, Oceania Games. We've fact. also got some um, Motorola playing cards. Baseball cards. Yeah, kids mm. used to swap these. They did. The Phil Anderson one mm. was worth five Rene Kink ones. There is mm. the dude, the Lance, the Texan mm-hmm. cowboy in his rainbow jersey. Yeah. Right there. Oslo, 1993. Now, why do you remember that so well? Hang on, let's check with the fact checker. Why does Billy Joe remember Oslo 93 worlds? He was. If you didn't hear that off camera, apparently I was a world champion in 1993 as well. Same year, same town. It's right there. It's right there. Now we've got... This is us keeping our cameraman busy by just pointing to random (laughs) things all over the room that we did not discuss before the show. We've got one other thing. We do. One other filthy Phil thing. Oh, we do. Our special guest. Oh, oh, before that. You keep talking. I'll go get it. Move over, Caitlin, uh, Bruce Jenner. We have... This is not the Wheaties box. This is the multi-grain box. And uh, we have Mr. Phil Anderson there. That's Clearly not transitioning into a woman. That's pretty Just transitioning <laughs> into a legend. That's pretty special. Mm-hmm. And on the back, I'm a bit confused. Muddy Fox. I thought they made... Mountain bikes. Mountain bikes. But apparently they made road bike as well. We also have various bits of Phil. Um, as most people would recall from Phil's stint with Motorola back in the day, he sported the very first... If you don't count Laurent Fignon, 
ponytail. I'm so excited about this. I know. I'm so excited about this too. And our number one guest in the studio tonight, super duper whiz bang, not his hairdresser, his actual ponytail. Ladies and gentlemen, Phil's, Phil's Tony. It's Tony Pale. <laughs> Phil's Tony Pale. Can you believe? I c- this show just blows me away. I come down here. I, I finish work on Friday. I come down. I get to sit next to a track world champion, and I get to sit next to Phil's ponytail. Adam gets blown every time he comes into oh, this place. Dude. He is blown. Okay, mm. so we said we'd talk about Litua. Yes, Litua. Let's talk about Litua. So current standings after stage 14. Are we that far I in? I think we're to 16, aren't we? Six, George? George? Stage 16? 16. Just 16? say yes. We don't check far? anything on the show. We've yeah, I think I believe this is 16. To go. Wow. Well, there was a rest day mm. before we're, we get... Well, we just say, Orica Greenwich has taken a very interesting yeah. approach to this tour by having more rest days than most of the other teams. Probably mm. 16 rest days, mm. I would say. I so noticed far in they had tour. a rest day the day before the the rest day they had a, a recovery ride mm. on their time trial bikes they took it very easy on that mm. one they made sure no one got too tired or sweaty mm. or anything they probably didn't want to have to wash the skin suits that mm. night i'm guessing no one keep them clean they weren't sweaty or anything keep after them that clean. One. no so overall in latua village Joe, we've got first chris Froome from britain second tj van Garderen, and in third nero quintana 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 i keep getting that wrong Nairo Quintana. Nairo, De Ni- Robert De Niro Quintana. Robert De Niro Quintana. Yes. Yeah. Now, fourth, Valverde, the 50, 58-year-old. That's right. How do you say his first name? Uh, Alejandro Valverde. I think J-Lo sang a song about that. Mm. Or something. He brings all the milkshakes to her yard or something. <laughs> Is that right? So, let's start off. Let's kick things off talking about Vincenzo Nibali, who's currently ninth in the Tour de France. And he's going to be looking for nibblies on getting a new contract. Yes, shortly. because yeah. overnight his mm. team director, yep, director sportif, is that the right thing? Yeah, DS. Yeah, DS. Mm-hmm. Alexander Vinokurov, who is famous for having a stellar career, mm-hmm. never using any gear. No, never, never getting, once got caught and using we'll any fact, gear at fact all. Check no. this, but never, never mm. getting disqualified for two years and then winning an Olympic gold medal no. in his comeback race. Why would he do that? Terrific look for the sport. Absolutely, of cycling, yeah, winning yeah. a gold medal mm. straight after the comeback. Yeah. He announced overnight, Nibali's getting the sack at the end of the year for mm. coming ninth in the tour. Not the good sack, not the good sack of goodies. No, the bad sack. <laughs> the bad sack, mm. they're gone. The, so, the get the hell out of here. The DCM. Because you know, don't come Monday. If your team mm. if your team Astana, you can just pick up another general classification rider yeah. easily. You know? Absolutely. Oh, we've we've Definitely. seen it in Australia. They they, they don't have any up. reputation they, issues. Yeah. No. Everyone's no. confident and comfortable to go. Very common. Um but th- in breaking news we did just find out that uh, from next year, Nibbly riding for Orica Green Edge. Orica Green Edge. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Breaking that news here on the show. TJ in second place. TJ, the European American. Mm. Most European sounding name in the whole tour. And he's is he a Yank? Mm. Or was he a Pom? It's uh he it says US he's, there. He's American. Mm. So Do you he, follows, he changed his name to sound more European? I I, I think so. Mm. To to so that the French would like him. Yeah. I bet his name's something like Travis Bickle or something. <laughs> yeah. Something American. Because the French don't traditionally like US cyclists. No. But no. will he, Billy Joe, will and I'm it, I'm interested in your thoughts, George. Um TJ, will he win the Tour de France one well, day? Well let's throw to Phil first and see what he says. Phil? Phil's Amazingly silent on this. I think he's he does not wanting to step into the controversy here. Mm. In third place, Nero Quin- N- Nairo Quintana, Nero or Robert, Nero Quintana, Robert De Niro. Both of them are right there in fourth. Robert De Niro Quintuplets. Robert De Niro Quintuplets. Is, now mm. he hasn't throw he what's the um the saying something about anger that he hasn't he hasn't thrown down the gauntlet. He hasn't done it. Being a small man, his gauntlet's mm. going to be a touch. Smaller, it's going to be a, a small gauntlet, possibly a mitten. He's sitting, he hasn't cast the mitten down yet. He's in third. He's in third. I think he'll finish third. Uh, I'm, I'm going to predict he's going to win. Now, mm. a guy that I'm really interested in, you're predicting he'll win. Yeah, yeah I'm pre- predicting a Quintana win. Okay, talk yeah, us, talk absolutely. us through the scenario that you see playing out. Uh, I think what's going to happen is that in one of the overnight stopovers, they're going to forget to plug Froome in. <laughs> oh, sorry, not him, his bike. <laughs> Who, Christopher Froome? Yes, yeah, they're going to forget to charge his bike up overnight mm. and uh, the resistance of the motor against the bottom bracket spindle 
I think is going to cause some problems. Yeah. That's my prediction. I said on my mic. What, are you, what are you telling me, Billy Joe? Oh, what do you mean? You, uh, no, I just said if they don't remember to charge his bike up overnight, he's going to struggle. He's going to... Didn't we all know about this? What? Wait. You know he's got a motor in his bike, right? A motor? Yeah. No. Is that... Well, he spo- isn't he... Spo- he's sponsored by e-bike. Isn't he? Chris... Chris Froome. Chris Froome. Are we not supposed to talk? He's got a motor in his bike. Norm, you're going to have to edit this. Can we edit? <laughs> yeah, let's cut it out. Stop Stop the camera. Billy Joe, in a big surprise in this year's Tour de France, Alejandro Valverde, Valverde. is in fourth place, mm. gunning for the podium. He is only th- four minutes down yes. on Christopher Froome, who is riding with a with an engine. Mm-hmm. So he's going to he's gonna get kicked out once that gets discovered. His, his VO2 max this year is mid one and a half horsepower, apparently. <laughs> yes. Mm. Um, the, but apparently the UCI check for motors now, engines. They do. In the bikes. Yes. So have they checked the soles of his feet? Because I've got oh. a feeling it might be in his hip somewhere. That might oh. be engaging through a, an electrical contact on the pedal. I don't know. And he, he also has a very unusual pedaling style, Christopher Froome. He does, but that can be traced back to having grown up in Africa where you do spend a lot of time. That there's a problem with fire ants. Fire there. ants. Fire ants, yes. Uh, and so you do spend a lot of time doing this kind of thing. Here we Looking down. And trying, to, trying to stomp on the ants. Genetically modified athletes. I mean, clearly this young man has praying mantis... DNA in his body uh, because he clearly either he skips arm day at the gym or else those arms are just decorative. He, I don't think he's even got arms. No, they're just like if you when they go when the camera goes around the side, they're like they're just bits of paper with drawings of arms. Yeah. Uh, so we do have uh, another another guest. Yeah, we have another guest on the show here. Just come sit here in the middle, young here, young fella. Yeah. No, you're right here in the middle. Why not? Is um, this Christopher Froome? I believe you're supposed to be in bed. Yeah, I think so too. Mm, what's going on? Um, um, I need to ask you something. Okay. But I forgot. Manny Shearsby, everybody. M- Manny? Yeah? What, what's that over there? Have you noticed what's over there? Um, Phil's ponytail. What do you think <laughs> about having Phil's ponytail in your lounge room? Um, it's a bit strange, but cool in the same way. It is cool. Do you think Phil looks better with it or without it? I don't know. Can you believe that Phil's 90? 90? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah, he's an old dude. (laughs) Oh, my God. Yeah. I never knew that. And if we we all got on bikes, he'd still beat us. Whoa. Yeah. He's pretty cool for 90. Yeah. Yeah. I I can only say his last name, Valverde. Alejandre... Dirty Sanchez Valverde. Alejandre. Mm. We started talking about him before. Mm. Fourth place. Fourth. Currently fourth in the TDF in Correct. this year's Le Tour. Yep. The guy is probably one of the oldest dudes in the tour, but not as old as you'd think. He's not as old as, as Adam Hansen. Adam Hansen's very old. Yeah. Adam's f- completing his 58th tour this year. Mm. Yeah. Consecutively. And as for a 65-year-old man, that's a decent effort. Makes his decent own shoes. Is that correct, George? 60- correct. correct, good. Lucky we so brought in a fact checker for this episode because people have criticised some of our facts. Phil. Yeah. George is right there. You there can he see. is. Give us a wave, George. There he is. The, sh- the man in the shadows. Mm. Phil, your thoughts on Alejandro? Look, he's not wanting to weigh in on this again. Phil's, I, I think the uh, some of the other TV, cha- he, TV channels and shows might be looking to poach Phil. Mm. I mean, based on the performance of some of the our other fellow sports commentators. I don't know why they would be doing mm. that. Commentators. Yeah. Commentators. Well, as you know, as I was saying before, um, Phil's been remarkably quiet tonight uh, and I think he's nervous about the edginess maybe of Grappetto's show mm. because, uh, you know, we are prone to drop the occasional F-bomb mm. or, you know, sometimes not 100% fact check something. Mm. Uh, some of our other... Contemporaries, mm. can we call them contemporaries? Yes. Peers, they're our definitely peers. our peers. Our peers, Maddie Keenan. Matty he Keenan. has done a stellar job, a stellar job, of helping me go to sleep each night <laughs> in the first hour of the tour coverage. <laughs> Rating out of ten, for mm, Matt, out Matty of Keenan. ten, he gives me. A, uh, well, 
it's it's a solid three and a half. Mm. Solid three and a half. What I want from Manny, Matty, mm. he's he is a very attractive man. He is. He, he is. is very attractive man. I want in more the large skull group of men, he's one of the hotter ones. I'll SBS. Mm. I know that at two thirty in the morning after yep. the tour finishes, you watch the Gruppetto show for mm. ideas. Yep. Here's an idea: more Matty visuals. More Matty visuals. We yes. want to see Matty on camera. That's right. We, especially wide angle, the six pack, wide and angle, le- his legs. Mm-mm. Look, it's a tough job that he does. Mm. Commentating on the first two and a half to three hours mm. of a stage race where in the pros, let's face it, no one's doing a damn thing. Mm. They're just rolling along, tough scratching gig. themselves. It's a tough gig. He does mm. make it very interesting by his over-pronunciation of all the European mm. names. Yeah. Very Alejandro Valverde. He's a very good pronoun- I like that one. Pronu- mm. pr- pr- how pronunciator. Say pronunciator. Pronunciator. His pronunciation he... is on point. Paul Sherwin. Paul so, Sherman. How long has Paul Sherman been commentating on the Tour de France? Sherman, the Shermanator. The Shermanator. Yeah, I mean, as half of the Shigit. George, how long have the how, how long has the Shigit been commentating on the Tour de France? So wow. thirty-five years minimum. That's by, old by my maths, uh, and still says uh, uh, Nairo Quintana. <laughs> he still doesn't understand. Phil, uh, c- can you correct the pronunciation for that? No. They they do roll deep with their cliches, mm, don't they? They do, mm. but I I I I feel like the cliches mm. have gone from awesome to even better, overdone to iconic. I, well, iconic. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Iconic cliches, suitcase mm. of courage, absolutely, all of yeah. that stuff. Impressive. So, a score for Paul Sherwin. Oh, look, I'm going to give him a four and a half. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to give him an eight. Okay. He's good. got new glasses. He does actually. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's it seems like you're a um mm. you're an oral aura guy. I'm a visual I'm, I'm guy. I'm a very oral guy. I'm Absolutely. a visual guy. I think the I'm glasses. All about the oral. Paul Sherwin and the glasses. And yep. and maybe a little bit of mm, a little bit of Botox possibly. A little bit of the old uh, Shane Warne sucky facey thing. I'm gonna give Phil Liggett the, sh- the second half of the Shigget. <laughs> I'm gonna give Phil I'm still going to give him a 9 out of 10. Yeah. Only because his wife gives a damn good massage. Oh. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Well, I've heard. Mm-hmm. That it's true. I don't even know what you're going to say uh, right now. I'm just going to confirm <laughs> it before I even hear it. I don't, I'm not sure I even want to say this. Our exec- I definitely want to hear our it. Our executive producer, the guy that funds the Gruppetto show, mm. he's behind the camera. He's scratching himself. He's head vigorously. Adjusting he's going, don't right. say it, don't say it. I've heard all the ladies on the tour call Phil. Ooh. They call him. <laughs> what is it? What do they call him? Please do it. Please do it. You know, every time you say please delete that, you know exactly what I do. You can see the highlight reel. <laughs> This 2015 Tour de France has seen an emergence of a new force in com- mm. in race commentary. The man with the smoothest hair I've ever seen. It doesn't move. I'm speaking of none other than... I've forgotten his name. Robbie McEwen. Robbie McEwen. Mm. Captain Crystal Cranks. Cr- Captain Crystal Cranks, your score for mm. Robbie? What have what uh, you... Zero. What, zero. What, mm. <laughs> what hasn't he bought to the commentary? Uh, well, he hasn't uh, still paid me for my cut from the Port Perry wheel race from 1993. How so much until does then Robbie... he gets a zero nada. How much does Robbie owe you, BJ? I don't know. If he'd bought me a beer, I probably would have forgotten about it by now. Ooh. But not even that. What do, I have heard mm. very deep pockets. Mm. Deep pockets, Robbie. He follows a lead out very, very tight. Like he will sit tight on that wheel, but not as tight as the man himself <laughs> they, and they don't come any tighter what do you think he's bought to the co- to he hasn't the bought a goddamn thing I'll tell you that <laughs> Every, anything he has bought has been given to him on that tour so probably my favourite commentator mm-hmm. I, I don't know if we call him a commentator but we, we cannot forget to mention Phil Phil we cannot forget to mention mm-hmm. Gabriel Gatte oh Gabriel Gatte the, the when I'm watching the tour at night, mm. Gabrielle comes on. The Twitterverse explodes. It with, does with positivity yeah, about Gabrielle. It does. Uh, I'm going to have to just oh, get into I'm character here. Who was that guy? I have no idea. 
tonight I am making a sausage roll. <laughs> I have special one which we get from a box from Aldi. We're going to use cheese in this one. Mm. One for me, one for the pot. This is special cycling food. There is no one in France that has that accent, do you, they? Your Gabriel mm. Gattais accent sounds very Cartman or some South Park episode well, character. I think it's the same thing. Mm. Mm. So score, There's nobody in France with Gabriel Gattais Score accent. for Robbie? Uh, zero. Yeah, 100%. Zero. Yeah, yeah, zero. One wow. big fat zero. Is, Robbie, we can sort this out, young fella. Um, so when I see Mike Tomolaris... Let's get into Tomo. We have to get into Tomo. This, this is how Tomo holds the mic. Mike Tomo. Like a true professional. <laughs> Next to... Ne- so you be, okay. are you Mike? You're Robbie. I'll, I'll be, be Mike. I'll be Robbie. <laughs> uh, how, did, how, how did you find that stage there, Robbie? Yeah, he, it was terrific. Hey, uh... Hey, um, Mike, do you reckon you could shout us a coffee, Robbie? <laughs> hey, Mike. Robbie, show, Robbie, show, could you shout us a coffee? Yeah. <laughs> Rob, <laughs> Rob, hey. Can we, can we just zoom up to Mike? Can, can, can I get that five bucks from dinner? <laughs> we can't do it. So seriously, no, it doesn't work. Nah, Tom. Since I've never noticed Tomo's hair before, neither have I. But since Robbie's come on board, do you know what? Tomo should get a sweet tattoo. He's well. very then, then the way he holds the mic would work even better. Robbie's very suave and short. Tomo <laughs> not so suave. So Tomo's all right. Can Tomo do something with his hair, or is it is a old dude trying to look cool? Oh, I think you're just picking on him. No, look, look, he looks all right. He looks mm. okay mm. compared to the. Little weirdo that Robbie is, I think he's mm. doing fine. So this is um, Tomo's twentieth year mm. on tour. You'll be able to tell there will be a specific point where we will notice when Robbie has overtaken as the the, the you know the the draw card on the shows, which is when they will start digging a trench for Tomo <laughs> and no box for Robbie. Mm. So prediction for the week to come. Uh, I predict that yeah, as I said, someone's going to forget to plug Froome in mm. or his bike, and yep. uh, that something is going to go pear shaped there. Mm. I'm thinking. I'm still thinking Contador or, or Nairo Quintana mm. or oh. Nero Quintana. Any one of those three could potentially come back. And Based on race. any sort of logical... No, no logic. No, okay. <laughs> no logical. So I'm going to base my prediction on... Did you have anything else or will I... No, go? no, that's it. Mm. So I'm going to predict Froome will explode mm. because he Literally. has, he has boom. done... He, yeah, yeah. Boom. His bottom bracket He's will done. blow up. First couple of stages... Over the cobbles, worked it. If Always his arms exploded, front. it'll sound like this. It'll sound like nothing. nothing Bits like of paper just tearing. Yeah, that's it. Um, worked really hard. Through the mountains, he's worked hard. Team time trial, guess who was on the front for most mm. of the race? Chris Froome. Froome dog. I think he's going to explode. That Mantis DNA runs deep, though. I reckon, mm. and I've just made this up right now. Good. TJ. TJ Van Der Arden. TJ. Son of Eric Van Der Arden. Tony, mm. t- Tony Van, Der Van Bell, Garderen. Van Garderen. Because mm. I would love to say Contador. You can, just say now. But Contador. I think, Contador. But I think the Giro's mm. destroyed him. That's right. So my prediction, ladies and gentlemen, first place, and I know I said Pino, but I'm going to go with TJ to win the Tour de France and follow in the tradition of Greek Le Monde. And get shot by eight seconds. Get shot before. Does he need to be tour. shot first to win? Yeah, I think he can win and I then get he shot. Can. He's doing freaky stuff with the camera now. I know. I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm liking that. Mm. Uh, uh, we need to cross to Phil. We do, Phil. Can we get a, a wrap up from you there, Phil? Uh, Phil, your thoughts on the tour? Who's going to win? Once again, very quiet, Phil. Fortunately, Adam, with all this controversy about uh, riders possibly being motor assisted in this year's tour, e bikes, e bikes, we have an expert in the field waiting for us at the Col du somewhere in France, Phil Anderson. The engine was going fine. <laughs> uh, I was really surprised. Yeah. You know, it's really what uh, what you need in a racing frame. Uh, very enlightening, there. I think from Phil. Uh, con- mm. Controversial, to say the least. Mm. What do you think, Adam? Incredibly controversial. Mm. I remember Cancellara, mm-hmm. the first guy to use an engine to win the double, Tour yep. of Flanders and Paris-Roubaix. I can't believe... But that's before they were... That's before all the engines were illegal. Mm. Yeah. I can't believe now. Mm. Froome dog. Mm. I know. Well, I mean, 
I'm all for it personally. Mm. They won't have to dope as much if they've got motors. That's true. It's so going to phys- be a lot safer. Mm, physically, it's a lot better for them. The fans yeah. will be impressed because they're going to go up those mountains really fast. You're the records will get smashed. Yes, mm. true. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching the Mid Tour Gruppetto preview show. If you've got this far, you deserve an award. Mm. Well, that was a comprehensive wrap up. We brought you facts, statistics, rumors, results, some reviews of the commentary, the SBS mm-hmm. commentary team. Yep. Thanks for watching. And until next time, from the has-been, Billy Joe Shearsby. And the know-it-all, George. And me, Adam Kelsall. Thank you for watching Gruppetto Show. How is it when we're filming and, and Norm does a crutch adjustment? I know, I like it's that. It's very distracting. Keeps... Keeps <laughs> keeps me interested actually.